With our seed created, we will set up our first corridor file. I've already browsed and located the seed. I'll now set the design folder to corridor designs and I'll enter the corridor. Notice all the information extracted or placed into the first seed file is now in my corridor design. To begin our overlay process, we'll need to featureize some of the survey content. We'll simply select an element and we'll exchange the file. What we'll want to do is featureize the edge of pavement in this design to use as a point control in our corridor. So for this we'll use our task menu, general geometry, set feature definition. We'll set our feature definition to the survey feature and we'll find our e-road edge of pavement. I'll give it a name and I'll begin selecting the elements that I want to featureize. My features are now featureized so I can return back to my corridor design. I'll use the radio buttons at the bottom to navigate back. With my alignment geometry reference, I'll highlight the alignment geometry. Using the mini toolbar, I'll create a corridor. I'll reset for the active profile and I'll use the name of the alignment 301 for my corridor name. The corridor is created and I'm prompted for a template drop. Alt down reveals the template library. We'll review the template in just a moment. However, in this case, we'll navigate to our template and we'll see that OVRLY. So I've created an overlay template from the provided components within our example workspace. I'll accept the template and I'll set a starting station. I'm going to key in 250 to begin my corridor at that station and I'll extend out and set the ending station to a point at the end of my feature. This will be the end of the overlay process. From here on we'll go with total new construction. So I'll set this to 2150 I'll leave the template drop interval set to 10 and the transitions I'll leave at 0. And my corridor drops. The intent here will be not to disturb the median within the area where we're completing our overlay. So if we look at our template, we'll reveal the construction of it. The template's set up with an overlay component in the middle. These components will accomplish both milling and overlay underneath a two inch wearing course. Our median line left and right has been used to set point controls with. So we'll test the horizontal and we'll see how the corridor or the template splits in half and when the median crosses the center line a portion of it will move with it of the overlay. We can repeat the process on the left median. To further exasperate the situation we want to be sure we have a minimum of a one foot 
new construction at the end or edge of our existing pavement. We do this by setting a second point control. This control will follow the existing edge of pavement. We can see as the pavement extends beyond the 24 foot line, a one foot reconstruct is provided. A new shoulder will be built along with an end condition. Guide rail will be placed for cross sections and we can replace the point for the top of the guide with a microstation post line style. This will provide us posts only where we want to see them. So this is our template we've just placed. We'll begin by setting the point control along the edge of the pavement. For this we'll be using the right EPX and the left EPX point within our template. So we'll use our mini toolbar and we'll access our point control. We'll set our station lock at zero and we'll set the end of this point control to the end of our corridor drop. We'll use a control description as X EOP right. We'll look up our point and we'll find our R E P X. So we want the right existing edge of pavement. For the point control, we'll use feature definition. And if you recall, we place the feature along our edge of pavement as E road edge of pavement. We'll set the range to 50 foot on the right and the priority to 1. So we'll go with the range of 50 feet, use secondary alignment, no, priority 1, and we'll apply the point control. Before we add the reference elements, we'll apply the point control to the left. So we'll use the same starting value of 0. Ending value. We'll change the description to the left existing edge of pavement. We'll change the point. to LEPX and again the mode will be horizontal again we'll be looking for the feature definition that is the existing road edge of pavement this time we'll look at minus 50 feet and we'll tab through our dialog now the last step in order to complete our point control is to add a corridor reference. So again, we'll select our corridor. We'll go to the corridor references, add, and we'll locate our references. At this point, it may be easier to turn off our display of our three-dimensional elements. Now we can zoom in find our referenced edges of pavement and we'll reset to complete. Next we'll apply the interior point control. This time we'll use a linear point control and we'll use it on the L median line and the R median line. So again, we'll create a point control, we'll set a beginning at zero, ending at the end of the median. So we'll just 
just call it median right. We'll use the R median line. And this time we'll use the linear, or rather horizontal mode, and linear control type. And we'll locate the lines in our drawing. Now we'll have to set up two right controls as we'll be using a control for both median edges. And the next control will unlock the start value. We'll set it to the intersection. We'll set the stop at the end. This time we'll call this median R1. Again, we'll use the same criteria, different element. And then we'll move to the left side. We'll use a start and a stop at the intersection. We'll change the name. We'll change the point. We'll use horizontal linear geometry. And again, we'll locate the plan element and we'll walk through our dialogue. Finally, we'll put our last left side median in place. We'll start, we'll end, we'll change the name to L1. We'll use the left median, horizontal mode, linear geometry. We'll locate our plan element. With this, we can now take a look at our design. Okay, so we'll change the density or the design stage from preliminary to design. And what we'll see is the multiplication factor will be applied so that we in fact have our true 10 foot drops and also densified where our drops uh, locate onto the uh, arcs within the median. So we can also see the um, overlay and milling components showing through. And let's set up a dual view. We'll window in to our design. And we can rotate our view at the intersection and at this time I wish to turn off the milling and the overlay to my level display off by element and turn that off at any given time we can adjust the geometry to lessen the milling or adjust the overlay with this stage complete, we're now ready to move on in our project and add additional template drops across the exchange area. We'll address this in our next session.